In introducing a limit, I mentioned a couple of times from both sides. So really we need a way now to formalize what we mean and some notation to go along with it of a one-sided limit. And so we've got um, this limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. Well, if uh, that would be the full limit, but if we put a little minus sign here as kind of a superscript to the c, that is now a one-sided limit, and this is going to be the left-hand limit. And when we're thinking about the left-hand limit, c minus, we're really thinking a little bit smaller than c. And remember that c is an x value, so values that are a little bit smaller than c on the x-axis would be to the left of c. And so that's how we get the left-hand limit there when we have the superscript of uh, minus. And of course we can do this here with the right side limit too. So it would be the limit as x approaches c. This time instead of a negative superscript, it would be a positive superscript. The function we would say it, of the function would be l, um, and that would be the right-hand limit. and we would be talking about a little bigger than C. And so again, since C is an X value, values that are a little bit bigger than C on the X axis would be to the right of C. And so we'd be looking at um, this, these X values coming in from the right hand side there of C on the number line. And so to get a, an idea of what this would look like um, for an example, let's draw a picture. So let's say here we have an important place C. That is a, an X value there, and we're looking at both of the sides, both left and right of C. So perhaps we have this function here, maybe that's coming in um, from the left to an open circle up there. And then perhaps here as it's coming in from the right, we would have, maybe it's approaching a solid circle, but there would be a function f of x. Okay, So, what we say is um, when we're coming here from the left, um, so as x approaches c from the left, we are up here um, for our function. And so this value here on the y-axis would be what we're talking about for the, uh, the limit as x approaches c from the left of the function. Okay. Now as we approach c from the right, we're coming in here from values above or bigger than c. And when we see our function, what we're doing is we're approaching uh, that solid dot down there. And so this value here then would be the limit as x approaches c from the positive side of the function. Okay? So a couple of things to notice here about this graph. Um, we have that the left side limit does not match the right side limit in this case. One was a positive value for um, the left hand side limit was a positive value and the right hand side limit ended up being a negative value. So those two things don't match. Um, so we can note that limit as x approaches c from the left of the function does not match the limit as x approaches c from the right hand side of the function. But one thing that we do have that matches is we've got this, um, there's a difference. One in, on, from the left we're approaching an open circle and from the right we're approaching a solid dot. And so that solid dot is going to be our function value for C. And so what we're noticing here then is your function value, F of C, the solid dot there is getting attached here to the right hand side. So the limit as X approaches um, C from the right hand side is what the function value is. And so those are just a couple of things to kind of notice as you're getting introduced to these limits because um, those are the sorts of observations we're gonna need as we move forward with even some new terminology in, um, in upcoming lessons. So another fact to go along with this, um, when we are looking at uh, the two one-sided limits, so say we have limit as x approaches c from the left, and say that limit value is L. But then we also have the limit as X approaches C from the right, and it's L too. 
So we notice then we can individually assess the two one-sided limits by looking at a picture or soon we'll be able to do this algebraically. So we can assess those two one-sided limits and then after the fact we can go and we can notice, oh, hey, these two things are equal. So when we get the two one-sided limits assessed and notice they are equal, what this is really telling us is that the limit as x approaches c of f of x, notice I didn't put a little minus or a plus there, I'm talking about the entire limit, that limit is the matching value. Now nowhere did I say anything about function value here. I'm saying as x approaches c from the left hand side and the right hand side, we're going to the same thing, there may be an open circle there. So for instance, we could have some graph that looks like this. Um, you know, maybe you've got just an open circle there, some hole, we've got a function, and C there is on our x-axis. It corresponds to the hole, um, the open circle there that um, is at the y value of L. And notice what we have here is the, the left-hand limit, the limit as x approaches C from the left of f of x equals L. That would be from the left. And then from the right, so this would be as x approaches c minus. So from the right, we have as x approaches c plus, and that is also L. So we see that these are in fact equal. Um, however, notice that f of c does not exist. It's undefined. There's no solid dot there at all. And so we can say that um, a limit exists without the function value existing at all. And so these are two separate concepts.